So lots of times we look, but we do not see. We have tremendous technology. We can swallow a camera these days. We can identify what's, quote, unquote, going on. At the semi-macroscopic level, we're not doing histological sampling here, but the problem is what about function? Many of us know the concept of structure begets function and function begets structure. We all learned back in whatever school we went to about the elementary tract, but we know so much more than we knew back then. And as we've discussed over the weekend with many of you, 10 to 15 years from now, we will be humbled by our colleagues, which have moved the ball forward even further. Today's topic will be the catch-22 of GI disease. The fact is, as we move through, and of course the great lecture just that occurred, presents the fact that we are a malnourished and overfed society. And the lecture after mine on gluten and gluten sensitivity will be a brilliant one because I know the lecturer. The fact is, how does one person become the other and eat ourselves into oblivion? Inflammation is part of that picture, of course. But the other thing is, how many of us have patients that come in with acid reflux, GERD? Lots and lots and lots. And many of us have patients that are so bad off with their GERD, we end up medicating them so they don't dissolve themselves or rot away their GI function. And we get the proverbial coffee pot percolator effect. I routinely will have a water bottle in my office, which is partially finished. And I will then tip the water bottle, when I'm talking to a patient with GERD, sideways. I said, this is the mouth of the bottle. This is the neck of the bottle. Likewise, when you lay down with a full tummy, the fluid wave is going to come up. Hence, no food or liquid for two to three hours prior to bed. No caffeine, no carbonated beverages. But the thing is, the fire still happens. Our patients say, but I've done all that and it still hurts. And so often they'll come in and say, my throat hurts. What does throat hurting have to do anything with GERD? A lot. A lot of times it just kind of hurts right there. You've been laying down on your side and the ass is pulled up and it's sat there. And that's the complaint. They might actually say, I don't have heartburn. As after all, we know 50% of people with acid reflux have silent reflux. My personal ear, eyes, and nose, throat said, Chris, you may have acid reflux. You may not have the classical heartburn, but the pharyngitis, laryngitis, and tonsillitis you're having from the age of 35 to 40 might be related to GERD. And he says, that might be your only symptom. It might be a pharyngeal issue, and you might not have a classical heartburn effect. Likewise, as we all know, you might have the peripheral morning cough. So once again, the irritation of that pathway. So often it's not as simple as we might think, yet we can take a pill, all kinds of pills, to go ahead and mitigate the symptoms. But like I tell my patients, and often they'll come in with their husbands and wives or significant others, and I'll say, well, if my finger hurts, what would you recommend? And then someone will say, well, maybe Advil. And another one might say Tylenol. I said, but could I just remove the splinter? And so our idea today and our conversation will be, how do we address the splinter phenomena of once we have ulcerative colitis, Crohn's, which we'll talk about today, diarrhea, constipation, celiac, are there certain nutrients which become deficient in these individuals, which because of their deficiency prevents them from healing? The answer is yes, as we'll, we will be reviewing the peer review literature. This is a little slide which you're welcome to copy and show to your patients. Normal stomach acid, what does it do? It's like having a lock on your front door. It keeps the squirrels and raccoons from making your sofa their next little nest. The only thing is once with our stomach acids either depleted through the aging process, they say by the age of 60, half the population is achlorhydric or hypochlorhydric. So the question in geriatric medicine, do we really need to be focused on micro and macronutrients at a higher level? The answer is yes. But the moment we take an acid blocker or through the aging process of decreased stomach acid, we're going to once again start having some more gastritis. And of course, in the peer review literature, it's been shown that about 90% of people that have H. pylori have some sort of gut dysfunction at the acid level. H. pylori actually becomes hospitable and actually starts taking over when we have a lower stomach acid. Otherwise, it's a little hard to grab in and put the little tentacles in and start growing. So once again, on my last slide, I will also have my email, which can allow you to give you, get all these slides. So you're welcome to take pictures all you want. At the same time, I'm going to present all these slides. Just email me. I will send them to you in the next couple of days. So GERD, reflux disease affects one-third of people in the U.S. Sixty-plus million people are affected by heartburn. Wow. So think about the fact that we have 300 million-plus people. Take out some of the kids, even though we know now lots of these kids have acid reflux when they're born, too, and they're born on an and all these things. And interesting, mental health, 80%.